The digital revolution does not happen in a vacuum. It's not like the transition to the digital age is written on a completely blank sheet of paper. No, it grows out of a historical, economical, political and social context that we have to consider when we study the transition towards the digital age because it surely shapes it. So that's what I want to talk about now. What are the global challenges that provide the context of globalization in the digital age? One of the arguments that is often made and has been made very eloquently by the New York Times columnist and best-selling author Thomas Friedman is that due to digitalization now, the world is flat. What he means by that is that this increased flow of information given to, due to this in, uh, digital infrastructure now leads to the fact that every individual can actively participate in the process of globalization, can search and spread information, can sell and buy products through this digital infrastructure that doesn't consider borders and leads to a, a process of globalization that's based on the individual. The traditional inequalities between countries and societies, they don't matter so much anymore. Uh, saying it in, in short, digitalization led to the fact that now the world is actually flat. We, we, we are all pretty much have these equal opportunities. Uh, let's listen to Thomas Friedman in his own words. There are two quick counter arguments that people usually come up with in response to the claim that digitalization flattened the world. And one more profound one. So the first quick one is that people say, well, the world is not really flat because there not everybody has the same access to the digital realm. So there's the digital divide. We don't have equal access and that doesn't give us equal opportunities. That is true. And then the other argument is also that some people say, okay, now everybody has access to this global informational realm and, and we all communicate there in, on the basis of individual to individual, but that's not necessarily a great thing. People talk a lot about the clash of civilizations that happens also due to digitalization. So we've been separated for thousands of years and developed our own cultures and religions and so forth. And now suddenly in, in 10, 20 years, we bring all of our different worldviews together. And some religions and cultures and, and, and ethnic groups, they don't agree with the worldview developed by some others. For example, this has some very brutal and real world uh, effects. In 2015, an Islamic extremist entered the editorial of a satire magazine in France, Charlie Hebdo, and killed, gunned down 12 cartoonists. Because these cartoonists, they were drawing cartoons that he is as an Islamist found very offensive. So some belief systems like Islam, for example, they say, look, we fundamentally don't agree with the fact that Pamela Anderson's bikini is plastered everywhere since the 80s already. We, according to our belief system, we don't even tempt people with the opportunity to, to, to promoting such a thing. And the Western world says, no, you know, we call this freedom. You are forced to have to look at Pamela Anderson's bikini because that's our philosophy of freedom. And we also, we have this kind of political system where we provoke each other and uh, some other cultures say well that's not how we actually do that but actually we cannot hide anymore kind of like the world is flat informationally now there there might be some technological possibilities but we didn't figure them out and and actually there is little space to hide until now and, and these cultures get really upset with also the dominance of the western world to just plaster the world view through these flattened informational systems all around the globe. So what some people say is, okay, the world is now much flatter in terms of informational flow, but that's not necessarily a good thing. If we still would be kind of like separated, or at least if it would have been a little slower, maybe the problem, maybe the problem is just, it went just a little bit too fast. You cannot be thousands of years separated and then in 10, 20 years, boom, bring it all together without um, any structure or orchestration. So maybe it went a little bit too fast. And the fact that the world is informationally flat is maybe not necessarily um, a good thing, some people say. 
A third response to the claim that the world is flat is to say, okay, so let's look at the global context in which the digital revolution happens. And let's see if maybe this global context in which it happens doesn't really permit the digital revolution to completely flatten the world. And, and this goes in two levels. So there's what I call the big systemic level, the macro level. It has to do with the historical, economical, social and political context on, on the big level. And on the small, the micro, kind of like the activist level with aid projects, resource allocation, and more the decision of individuals, organization or individual governments. And this global context is what we will look at next.